Hello everyone! Happy Friday, March 19th, and let me tell you what a glorious day it is. This is one of my favorite days for comic book people all across the globe. I know there are many monumental moments that we've had as comic book fans over the last decade or more, but today feels just ever so good. I'm basking in the hype. I'm basking in just the happiness that's encompassing me right now. Last night, I was able to watch the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League, and let me tell you, mwah, chef's kiss, but that's not what this video here is about. We are going to be watching Falcon in the Winter Soldier and talking all about episode one and what has been released, where we think the series is going to go, and blah, 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 fun stuff like that. Because Falcon in the Winter Soldier is here, and after WandaVision ended two weeks ago, I have been just waiting with bated breath for the new Marvel TV show to see where they go, how they expand characters that, in all respects, even though I really enjoyed, didn't get quite the screen time that they probably deserved or needed to really become people's favorites during the movie's runtimes. I that's why I absolutely love these shows. Uh, we had Wanda Vision, who Wanda and Vision didn't really get the development that was needed to make people really care about them, to make them care as much as someone like a Tony Stark, to make them care like someone like a Chris Evans or I should say Steve Rogers, Captain America. Uh, those characters, Wanda Vision, didn't get the the prime time, so now their TV show has kind of advance their story. And I'm expecting the same thing here with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, two characters who I've come to love through reading comics and generally relatively enjoyed in their respective movies. But here we go, a, a series centrally focused on them. You can already hear me kind of stumbling over my words because I'm just building with excitement, knowing that I'm getting this much closer to seeing it. Now, uh, just before we go through this, I guess we'll do some house cleaning thing here. I guess how this video is going to be structured for those of you who are interested. Maybe you want to skip around, see one part or don't want to listen to another. This first part after the introduction is done, I'm just going to go over my history with Falcon in the Winter Soldier. Uh, comics that I've read, things that I know about them as far as just like my general knowledge based on who these characters are. Then we're going to go into just quick speculations on to where I think the TV show's going to be going. Uh, because... Spoilers for this video, and it's not, I'm, jo I'm joking. Uh, just so you have a bit of background information on me, I haven't watched a single trailer for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I think I've seen the five seconds that I need to see on YouTube before a video plays. Uh, so pretty much the only image I have stuck in my head right now is uh, that shot of a Captain America figure running out into, I want to say either a stadium or like a football field or something, but I don't think you ever see like a space. I think it's just behind the back shot. And that's the only thing I know. That's the only thing I know about the show. So I'm pretty excited to go into this blind. I, I didn't expect too much from WandaVision. Ended up being one of my favorite TV shows ever. So I'm not going to put Falcon and Winter Soldier up here. I'm going to go in with low expectations and expect it to be great. Um, so just real quick, jumping into the next section. I just want to quickly go over my history of Falcon and the Winter Soldier so that everyone kind of knows where I'm coming from when I say certain things. And they're not like, what are you talking about, my dude? Again, I have not watched any of the trailers. I don't listen to leaks or spoilers or speculations on websites like Reddit or on, on the internet, Twitter or whatever. So these are all my own kind of speculations and thoughts and feelings. I'll probably end up going on the the you know, speculation rabbit hole on these different websites after the first episode is done and go from there. But um, as far as comics go that I read in preparation for this, all this was read in the weeks after WandaVision. Just so you know, I've just read them in the last two weeks. I have gone through Winter Soldier, Winter Kills, the full run. I've gone through Ed Brubaker's Captain America 1 through 50, Captain America Who Will Wield the Shield, the full run, The Trial of Captain America, that full run, uh, the trade paperback I read on that. Uh, Captain America, Sam Wilson, full run. All new Captain America, full run. Kyle Higgins, Winter Soldier. I think that was in 2018. I read that full thing. There was five issues. Easy breezy. And then Derek Landy's Falcon in the Winter Soldier. Again, easy breezy. Uh, five issues on that. But I just wanted to get like an idea of who these characters were. Because I will be honest with you, before the MCU came along... I didn't care about Falcon. I didn't care about the Winter Soldier. And I will be honest, I didn't care about Captain America at all. In the comics, he was just whatever. He was kind of just like this stiff goody two-shoes that I didn't really resonate. I like the X-Men. I like Spider-Man. Uh, I didn't really care for too many of the other heroes. I read, you know, different... Won't go too far into it. Regardless, um, 
So with the introduction to the MCU, I really started to fall in love with these characters and I wanted to get to know them a little bit more. Where do I think this series is going to go? I, I have to reel back my expectations here after the whole WandaVision thing kind of spiraled out of control with a lot of people. Uh, people expecting Mephisto to come through and, you know, multiverse and, and Doctor Strange and introduction to the X-Men. Theories were going pie in the sky type of deals and I want to reel it back. We're starting to see how these TV shows are kind of going. They're more personal character dramas, uh, advancing the characters, getting them ready for prime time, I'm assuming. Uh, there's also a chance that these TV shows are going to be kind of the the single issue runs or even the trade paperbacks where it's like, a, hey, uh, this is the trial of Captain America mixed with the all new Captain America. And then once we get into the feature films, the movies, the Avengers all teaming up proper, that's when we get the crossover events, the Infinity Gauntlet saga. That's when we get the Secret Wars and you know Secret Empire, things like that. Uh, so I think they're going to start doing TV shows to elevate certain characters so that they're not all trying to cram it in in a two and a half hour film, which is a lot. So we'll see. Uh, for this show specifically, I think we're going to have a little bit of the all new Captain America where Sam Wilson is now carrying the shield. He is Captain America. Steve Rogers is retired and he has to deal with the the weight of of the job but more specifically the weight of the shield what it means to america and not just him uh he's going to have to contend with a lot of people doubting him not just because he's not steve rogers but because he is also black and that's going to be a huge thing uh he's also the falcon people are like who was the falcon he was what was he captain america's sidekick so I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Sam to perform well. I think he's going to have to come into his own and realize that he isn't Steve Rogers, that Steve Rogers chose him specifically for a good reason. I believe they say because he's a good man and uh, and Sam Wilson is going to have to kind of come to terms with that and get used to carrying the shield. And I think by the end of it, he'll get his like Falcon suit with the red, white and blue, or maybe he won't, uh, but he'll he'll get used to it. As far as Bucky goes, I think Bucky is going to have to, I don't know. Um, now, I, I think, I, think I, I do know this. I think Baron Zemo is the villain of this show. And from what I've read in some of the comics over the last two weeks is there is a Baron Zemo's grandson that in the future, blah, 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 you know, because original Baron Zemo was a World War II Nazi kind of guy and his grandson kind of took up the mantle. Uh, during the run after Civil War in the comic books, there was a period where uh, Bucky Barnes did become Captain America before Sam Wilson, and he had to deal with that whole weight of the shield, uh, how that all worked out. Then he was brainwashed to become, you know, the Winter Soldier, did a lot of killing. How does he carry the shield? How does he deserve it? How does he live up to the reputation when he has this, this bloody past? And I think um, one of the interesting parts of the comics that I read was the trial of Captain America where Baron Zemo, the grandson, actually exposes uh, Captain, Captain America, being at this point Bucky Barnes, as the Winter Soldier and the media backlash and uh, having to actually go on trial in court and be defended and uh, eventually, well, I won't spoil what happens, but that whole process. I think that might play into something, kind of Mary, maybe Baron Zemo coming through with Maybe Crossbones. I don't remember if they kill Crossbones in the MCU, but regardless, uh, Baron Zemo coming through and maybe trying to tarnish their name. Uh, again, that shot of that, that Captain America running out onto the field, I don't think it's either Bucky or Sam Wilson. I think that might be possibly a Baron Zemo plant. It may even be a government plant. Maybe the government isn't on Sam Wilson's side and tries to make their own. Um, there are a few in the comic books, Captain America clones or knockoffs. A lot of the times heroes recycle or they try to get the next generation. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was either started as Falcon's sidekick or he was his own. But there was a hero called Patriot who actually wields Captain America's first shield from World War II. Um, not the vibranium one, but just a classic shield. And, you know, he's... Where's red, white, and blue? Uh, I think in the comic runs right now, he is a black man. I do not, or I think he's young. I think he's a younger kid, or at least he was during Civil War. Uh, I don't know if he's stayed around, if he's died, if he has been, you know, reincarnated as someone else. But from what I read, there are different Captain Americas like that. Um, 
there's a dude who went through such drastic lengths as like plastic surgery, changing his like name, um, taking like this knockoff super serum, super soldier serum in order to become a Captain America. And he kind of goes crazy in the head and stuff like that. So there's a chance that there are going to be a lot of fake Captain Americas coming up. And Sam again and Bucky are going to have to kind of contend with that. Other than that, I have no expectations out of the show except for making these characters expand into each other and kind of growing in a what I would call a buddy cop situation. We kind of saw in, I believe, Civil War, where those two are kind of butting heads rivalry about who's uh, Sam Rogers' best friend. So without further ado, I'm actually going to jump into the next part where I actually watch Captain, or I'm sorry, Falcon and the Winter Soldier for the first time. I'm actually going to keep this camera running just in case anything like holy Christmas, that's the reaction of the century sort of deal. Uh, but if nothing happens, we'll skip into the final section where we just talk about the show, give it a quick discussion and a review. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to load up this uh, thing and either I will see you in just a second with my thoughts or uh, you'll get a quick montage smash cut of my reactions throughout this video. Ooh, okay, so I just finished watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier for the first time, episode one. A lot to go through, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, quick initial spoiler-free thoughts. I really enjoyed it. I I actually enjoyed this quite a lot. It set up the stakes of what's to come. It showed a little bit of action. I really kind of pushed the characters to where I thought they were going to go, and I think it truly succeeded in doing that as well. So spoiler-free thoughts. Really enjoyed it. Can't wait to see what else. Um, I don't know how long this season's going to be, if it's going to be like the uh, WandaVision 9 episodes, if it's going to be longer, if it's going to be shorter, whatever it may be. I, I truly and honestly hope that they can keep this level going. I know some people may be a little disappointed. Well, I don't know this, but I'm sure some most people are going to be disappointed because maybe it's not like, well, Anthony Mackie doesn't have the shield yet or oh, Bucky and, and uh, Falcon aren't even together and blah, blah, blah. there's all this extra blah. It was just a lot of talking and not a lot of this and that and blah, 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 blah. I actually really like that. I kind of liked, uh, and I know I keep on referring back to it, but it's the best like comparison I have. The best part of WandaVision wasn't the action scenes. It was the character drama. And to me in this episode, seeing the interpersonal drama between the characters and the people around them was in fact fascinating um i'm actually going to get a little bit worried when we get to the climax of the show and there are going to be the confrontations the showdowns and whatnot i'm not sure if that's going to be my favorite thing or if it's going to help the story in any way because like i say i think the interpersonal drama is going to be the best also i just want to say jumping now into spoilers uh going right off in the beginning here where there was that falcon air fight there was a lot of like camera shake and awkward movements and a few bad cgi shots that made me not really enjoy that that action sequence nearly as much as i probably could have it's a little weird i obviously will give them the benefit of the doubt a, it's a TV show, so the budget's probably not as great. And B, COVID sort of thing. So it's one of those deals, people working from home. You're not able to kind of collaborate in the same way. Uh, things just take longer and are a lot harder to do when you are in that type of field. So I have to just give them to that, the fact that they are even to make the show. So let's just get that out of the way. Um, man, it's... I guess exactly how I thought it was going to be. It's kind of just going, jumping back through the plot. It starts off with Sam kind of getting ready for a, a speech about Captain America, Steve Rogers, at the Smithsonian. Uh, he's giving up the shield as a display, you know, a history uh, exhibit, I guess, is the, is the best way. Uh, I think it's a permanent exhibit honoring Captain America. So he gives up the shield and gives it to the Smithsonian. And uh, in the crowd, while Sam is giving the speech, he, well, the camera, I guess I should say, but like they kind of make eye contact. Uh, Rhodey is there. And Sam and Rhodey end up having a conversation. But one of the, the key things that I think, uh, let me just check my, my notes here, is uh, with Rhodey, I, I felt like he really resonated with one of the lines that Sam says. Uh, <sighs> hold on let me sorry i'm just checking my notes here that uh a symbol is a man not the shield right 
And I think Rhodey really took that one to heart because he lost his best friend, Tony Stark, and he does have a suit of, of Tony's. And since the world knew of Tony very much like Steve, is he going to be able to fill out those shoes? I think that's setting up uh, a large part the Iron Wars TV show that's, a, that's going to happen featuring Rhodey. So that, that was cool. It was cool to see. I wasn't expecting to see Rhodey at all. I don't think he'll make too much of an appearance further into the show. I think that was just his one cameo getting ready for his own show. So don't expect too much, I would say. But other than that, um, so we have that whole thing. One thing I do want to mention, kind of jumping back, I guess I should say, that whole action sequence in the sky where where Sam is the Falcon and rescuing a soldier of some sort from the LAF, a terrorist organization. Um, so Falcon's working for the military, but he has to keep his operations under the radar or covert or something, which is weird because... I don't know if he ever does that in the comics. So it's almost like it's a blend of Bucky, uh, the Winter Soldier, in some of his comics. After he comes back and they, they work out the brainwashing, he does some covert ops for the government as well. But this time it's Falcon. I don't know if he ever did that in the comics. I could be wrong. Like I said, I've barely scratched the surface of reading his stuff. But it was weird for me to see them kind of split that thing in two and then have Bucky, which we'll get into later, kind of doing his own thing. One thing I do want to mention kind of during this uh, action sequence, the, the main dude that Sam is constantly fighting, I don't know who he is. I don't know if they ever name him, but I do wonder if it's the Leaper. Uh, I, do, I don't remember his, his actual name, but I'm pretty sure his name is Leaper. I think he's a French martial artist, um, pretty strong, has some kind of like crazy moves where he's jumping a lot of the time. Uh, he's fought Falcon and Captain America multiple times and stuff like that. So he might be, he might not be. Uh, he could just be some random guy, <laughs> but there's that. Anyways, um, one person that I guess we need to remember is the contact that Sam has with the military on the ground because he pops up a few more times in the episode and I'm assuming he's going to have a bit of an important role coming up a little bit further in the in the show as well. Um so yeah, let's let's move on from there. <laughs> let's uh so we, we talked about the action sequence to open up and the ceremony and all that. And then we kind of like switch between Captain America. Uh, I'm sorry, no, nah, they're not it's not Captain America. I'm sorry, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Bucky and Sam Wilson. Respectively, they each get their own personal time, which is why I assume this show, uh first episode is 49 minutes. Uh, I would say it's actually about 43 minutes, 42 minutes, because there is about seven minutes of cutscene or um, <laughs> end credits. So, um, so yeah, there's that. So S Bucky is having a nightmare. The first introduction that we have of him, uh, we, we don't know. He still has his long hair. He still has the, the star on his on his arm. He still has the old metal arm. And uh, before he goes to Wakanda, and eventually, you know, he it shows that he takes out some people. I don't remember what country it was. I don't know what language they were speaking. And uh, during that time, when he's taking out all these these guards and stuff, he ends up killing an Asian boy and who is uh, innocent. He is working at that facility that Bucky's infiltrating. I think it was a museum or a hotel or something like that. And he witnesses Bucky murdering uh, all those goons. And as he's trying to escape, Bucky walks over and he's like, please, I won't say anything. I didn't see anything. And he kills him, unfortunately. Uh, flash cut to Bucky waking up from that nightmare. And it is present day, short hair, Bucky, all that. Next thing we know, he is in therapy and talking about things. Uh, he's trying to keep it quiet that he had that nightmare. But the person he's talking to clearly sees through him. They go through his three uh, rules for uh, the government giving him a pardon, which was surprising. So either he already went through the trial and was cleared and pardoned, but with stipulations, or it could come later. Um, who knows? Who knows where they're going to go with that? But it seems like they skipped over the, the whole trial conviction sort of thing and are moving past it. So the three rules that he have is he can't do anything illegal. Uh, nobody gets hurt. And then the third one is a little bit odd. I think it's make amends, but I don't know if that's his own thing or if there was something else to that. But he has a checklist, a little notebook of names and 
things that he did as a Winter Soldier that he's trying to make amends for. And I think that's trying to ease his conscience uh, so he's not having as many nightmares, but it doesn't seem to really be working. Um, because I think he has... Well, I don't know if it's just one. We'll see. It's still the first episode. If he has one main nightmare or if it's just a bunch of them reoccurring. But the one that he has is about killing the, the young Asian boy. And we find out later, jumping ahead a bit, that that Asian boy was this man that Bucky hangs around with. Uh, Yuri Nakajima. Nak Yuri Nak Nakajima is supposedly uh, kind of stereotypical grumpy old man, but... They say he changed after his son died because it's never easy for a parent to bury a child, let alone not know what happened to the child and have that guilt for the rest of their life. Um, and I, I don't know if, if Bucky is hanging around Yuri Nakajima because he killed his son or if they were friends first and then he finds out he killed his son. Uh, it was a little ambiguous because there's times that Bucky kind of like had those like flashes to realization sort of deal when Mr. Yakajima was speaking about his son. And then later when he sees the shrine memorial for Mr. Nakajima's son. Uh, so that one's still yet to be answered. I think eventually he's going to have to come clean and Yori is could go either way. Obviously it's a 50, 50, he could forgive him or he could hate him, but uh, their scenes together, Bucky and Yori, were actually really nice and it's those types of things that i say that i want more of in the show those interpersonal relationships that they build um because bucky doesn't really have much he i think he feels more comfortable around someone who's older because he's 106 years old but it's funny because yori and no one else really knows that side of him that, you know that he's 106 so yori tries to set him up with a date with a young waitress at the bar or restaurant that they're at uh, she accepts, which is nice, but he has to bail on the date. So that's going to be a little bit awkward, I'm assuming. I originally thought that, you know, she says, oh, I'll be free at 10 p.m. sort of thing next day or whatever it may be. And he accepts and blah, blah, blah. And something with Falcon and Bucky are going to be called to a greater purpose. And they're going to miss their respective whatevers. And, you know, they'll have to kind of dig themselves out of that hole. Because even Sam has one a little bit later that I thought was leading to something. Uh, speaking of, we get to see Sam interacting with his sister and his nephews. It's sweet. It's endearing. We get to know more about them. The family business that his sister has been trying to keep afloat for the last five years since Sam got flipped away. And uh, how it's not easy for her, you know? Uh, she's a single mother, a widower of two children. And uh, she's trying to keep that family business afloat. I guess they were charter fishermen or something, but she also either feeds people, uh, homeless or food shelters, or she runs a restaurant sort of thing, like a sort of thing. I, I'm not quite sure. They didn't explain it. I'm sure it'll come up a bit later in the, in the show. Uh, but Sam's back and she wants to sell the boat and the house because uh, she's either in debt or has loans to pay or whatever. Sam's opposed to it. Sam's really opposed to it because it's partially his, but he wasn't there for five years and he's kind of trying to cling on to the past, but I don't think it will last. I think he'll have to come to realization that sometimes you have to, you know, do certain things to, to move on and grow up and blah, 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 live life. But again, going back to it, this is one of those moments that I really, really enjoyed watching him interact with his sister and his nephews uh, and all that, just kind of seeing them live day to day. The parts that I started to fade off on were when we go back to that ground contact that Sam Wilson had that, that, in the military. Now he's investigating the Flag Smashers, who seem to be the main villains of this uh, show. He starts like recording like in his pocket. He has like a tape recorder or no, a camcorder. And... I guess like the Flag Smashers have this app or something that you apply to if you're just like a random person. I don't really think you get it in like not indoctrinated, but I don't think you get enlisted into the ranks. I think you can just like show up and help or whatever. But he shows up to this meeting. Uh, he gets a black hockey mask with like a red handprint over the face, uh, puts it on and the app immediately like, starts ringing. Like it says Ren or something. I think it's R-E-N-N. -N. I think it's supposed to be run either in German or whatever language that they're speaking. 
and uh, everyone scatters. All the people that were gathered there that put on the mask scatter. And the, the two bags start like uh, come out of like a building. And this dude jumps down, grabs them with everyone scattering, he hands two bags off to different people. And the Grand Contact, I think his name was Torres, uh, intercepts that first guy who threw the bags out and jumped out the building. But he's super powered. He like kicks a cop like halfway like <laughs> across the universe. He uh, lifts Torres up and slams on the ground, kicks him in the face, knocks him out sort of thing. Um, one thing I, I am curious about, there, there was a kind of a lingering shot when, he, when Torres first gets the mask. The, the girl who hands him the mask, right? She has this fiery red hair, curly. I'm curious. I, I'm really curious because I do know that Baron Zemo is in this show. I wonder if they're going to try to pull in, uh, and this is just my own basic common knowledge. There's a character called Sin, um, Cynthia or something, I think her name is. Anyway, Sin is the daughter of the Red Skull. And there could be some trickery here. It could be the great granddaughter of the Red Skull. But I wonder if this girl is going to be Sin. Uh, Sin also in the comics becomes the new Red Skull for a while. Like she's just a regular pretty girl at first. Then she gets caught in an explosion as the, the Red Skull uh, thing like her, her father did at that point. But great grandfather, whatever it was. Um, so I wonder if she's going to be that. Because also, I should mention, Sin in the comics dates Crossbones, who appears in Age of Ultron and earlier iterations as well. And in the comics, I believe Crossbones has a face mask, like a Jason Voorhees with a white handprint. I can't remember if he has that. He might have a skull in the other. Actually, he may always have a skull. Anyways, I think, yeah, because Crossbones. Regardless, I'm not sure. I have no indication. It's just my own speculation. I wonder if that girl with the red hair who's handing out the mask is sin. That's all I'll leave it at. And if she is, is she the family member of the Red Skull? Who knows? Um, but yeah, the Flag Smashers, they're something. I think they're just kind of a goon squad for now. We'll see if they develop into anything. I don't really care. I, I just like watching these characters kind of interact. And that's really my biggest thing. Uh, the last thing I guess I'll mention is the DOD, the Department of Defense, uh, at the very end of the episode, has officially nominated their new Captain America, a white man uh, who has really weird, goofy ears and a big nose. And I'm not really sure is the American ideal, but whatever. Uh, I'm sh I don't want to judge the actor. You know, that's really surface level bullshit that I just said. But when you're comparing it to Chris Evans, it's uh, it's a little hard to be like, uh, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah, Sam has to watch the DoD announce on television that there is a new Captain America wielding Steve Rogers shield that Steve Rogers gave to Sam Wilson, which is going to be a point of contention for sure. And it makes me wonder if Bucky is actually going to be the one to take the shield back, if he's going to... Uh, allow someone else to carry that shield to carry that moniker in the comics the reason why bucky becomes captain america while steve rogers is dead is because he doesn't want anyone else to wear the shield he doesn't think anyone else is worthy of it so he holds on to it um not that he thinks he's worthy of it but he knows that no one else is and so it's better for him who used to be captain rogers sidekick uh, to hold on to it so It'll be interesting to see if Bucky kind of goes on a little rampage, and that's why Sam and Bucky get back together. Because right now they're separate; they're on, they're doing two separate things. Um, they're not even in contact like on a regular basis anymore. So it'll be interesting to see how this develops. That's my initial thoughts of this episode so far. I won't say there's anything like whoa moment, but it's only the first episode. I thought it was just it was a good episode uh setting up a lot of good things i can't say there was anything egregious about this uh, i would say it's a solid b plus uh really enjoyed it truly and honestly other than that i i guess we'll end this episode here but before i go i just want to let you know i will be doing one of these kind of reactions every week as long as this show runs on and hopefully throughout the rest of the mcu runs so we'll do the tv shows we'll do the movies and stuff like that i just really enjoy this universe this whole collective that they built up and I want to share that with people. I understand that this is a way for my regular gaming content. I'm trying to get back to that as well. But for now, I'm just kind of 
chasing my passions. When I'm passionate about certain things for a little while, I want to talk about them. I don't want to just be pigeonholed into one thing and burn myself out. So that's kind of what's happening. I'll try to you know be better about varying the different types of videos that are coming out. But thank you all so much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. If you have watched Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, feel free to let me know in the comment section below what you liked, what you didn't like, what you're hoping for the future. But please, no spoilers. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all later.